SPH4U motions in a plane, 1.1 introduction to vectors. This will be the first video in a series on SPH4U or grade 12 university preparation physics. First, we're going to start off with some math review. So right now we're going to view light angle trigonometry. Assuming that everything is being assessed off of angle theta here, we know that this is opposite as it's the opposite leg of the triangle to the angle. This is adjacent as this is the adjacent leg, and this is hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the longest uh, length of a right angle triangle. So now we can create some trigonometrical ratios. So sine of theta will be able to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of theta will be able to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan of theta will be equal to opposite over adjacent. This can be remembered using the acronym SO, CA, TOA. So this means opposite over hypotenuse. A, adjacent over hypotenuse. OA, opposite over adjacent. You should also recall the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the two legs. As well, for non light angle triangles, you should also know the sine law and cosine law. Sine law is a over sine of a is equal to b sine of b, which also equal to c over sine of c, wherein if this is angle c, this would be the le uh, side length c. If this is angle a, this is side length a. If this is uh, angle b, this is side length b. So sine law is used if you have an angle and its corresponding side length, and you're trying to find either another angle or another side length. Cosine law is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. So this would be used if you have a side, an angle, and a side, or you know all three sides. So I'll draw that out. So if you know the values of a, b, and c, and you're trying to find any angle theta, you can use this. Or if you know a side, this angle, and a side. Now we're going to go over bearings and standard angles. Bearings are with respect to the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. So if you have a bearing of north 30 degrees east, then you first start off with north, in the north direction, and then you'd go 30 degrees towards the east. And that angle is 30. Now, Now if you have a bearing of 30 degrees north of east, then you first start off with the east direction because you know that's going north of east. And then you go 30 degrees up north. Sorry for that line. And the standard angles, that's always with respect to the positive x direction or east. So if you have this vector here, and this is the angle, then its standard angle would be the angle measured between the positive x direction and the vector. So if you have this vector here, then its standard angle would be so many degrees from the positive x direction. In physics, the word scalars and vectors always pop up. So a scalar is a quantity described by a magnitude. So, such as speed, time, mass, etc. So, if a car is going at 45 kilometers per hour, or if um, 
something is taking 15 seconds, or the mass is 51 kilograms. These are all classified as scalars. A vector, on the other hand, is a quantity described by magnitude and direction, such as velocity, displacement, force, and other things that we will learn later in this course. So if the velocity of a car is 48 kilometers per hour north, that would be a vector. If the displacement is 59 meters north, 55 degrees west, that would be a vector. So you see, in these square brackets, we have the direction. And out in front, we have the magnitude. Where in a scalar, we only have magnitude. Vectors can also be described by their components. So first, I'm just going to show you visually how vectors can be added. So if you have vector 1 here, and we have vector 2 here, note that vectors are always uh, designated by this little arrow on top, which says that they're a vector as opposed to a scalar. So vectors are always added tip to tail. So v1. The tip of this is added with the tail of V2. This is tip. This is tail. And the resultant vector is this. So this is VR, the resultant vector. So VR is equal to V1 plus V2. When subtracting, we just reverse the direction of the second vector. So if we have v1 minus v2, it'll look like this. v1, v2. So this is the resultant vector. Now I'm going to show you how vectors can be broken up into their components. So in a right angle triangle, the vector will always be the hypotenuse. So this theta angle, you would get from either the bearing of the vector or the center angle of the vector, and that would be given in the question. This would be the y component of your vector, and this would be the x component of the vector. So in order to find the values of these, you would have to use trigonometry. So v of x, vx is equal to v cos theta. Vy, that would be equal to v sine theta. Now I'm going to walk you through an example of a question with components. So John walks 30 meters east, 50 meters north, and 90 meters 30, degree, 30 degrees north of west. What is his found displacement? In these questions, you should first always figure out what you're trying to find. So you're trying to find the found displacement. So that would have to, for that, we would have to add up all of these different uh, vectors. As well, we always need to create a reference frame that's always going to be positive. So for this case, north and east should be considered positive. So we know that the, our first displacement is um, 30 meters east, d1. And we know that our second displacement is equal to 50 meters north. And we know that third displacement, it would be 90 meters and 30 degrees north of west. So if we're going in the northwest direction, and we go 30 degrees up north, that would be our vector, and that's 90 meters. So that can be written as west, 30 
30 degrees north. Now we have to break out down displacement number 3 into its x and y components. So you know that uh, this would be 90 cos of 30 degrees because we know that the angle is 30 from here and uh, we know this cos because this is the extraction. So this would come up with 77.9 meters per second west. Now in the y, it will be 90 sine of 30. That's sine is because this is the x y component. So that would come up with 45 meters per second north. So now we need to sum, uh, do a sum of all the components in both the x and the y directions respectively. So this letter, sig this is the Greek letter sigma, it uh, represents the summation. Summation of the displacements in the x, that would be equal to 30 meters east plus 77.9 meters west. Now we can't do that because both these are going into opposite directions and uh, east is our positive reference plane. So that would actually be equal to 30 meters east minus 77.9 meters east. So if someone's going 77.9 meters west, that's the equivalent of saying that they're going negative 77.9 meters east. So that would be equal to negative 47.9 meters east. For the sake of making more sense in the situation, let's just convert this to west. 47.9 meters west. Now we're going to do the same type of summation for all the components in the Y. So that's equal to 50 meters north plus 45 meters north. So that's equal to 95 meters north because both of them are in the same direction we don't need to change anything so now in order to find the magnitude of the final displacement or let's call it total displacement we do the square root of the squares of plus dy squared this is the pythagorean theorem so that comes out to be the square root of 95 squared plus 47.9 squared so that is 106.4 meters and the theta we uh, we have the uh, total displacement and we also have displacement in the x so that means that in this triangle, we have d, t, d, x. So now in order to get the angle theta, we would have to do cos of theta is equal to d, x over d, t. So theta is equal to cos inverse of d, x over d, t. So that means theta is equal to cos inverse 47.9 over 106.4 theta is equal to 63.2 degrees so that means that here final answer will go here final therefore dt is equal to 106.4 meters west 63.2 degrees north we know that this is west 63.2 degrees north because we use the x and the final displacement